Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. And welcome back for more punishment. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. In, it has been a, a real busy day. I know there's probably some out there that say, I hope they're okay. It's, it's you know, getting to be late afternoon and evening and they haven't put anything up. It won't. It's just been uh, energy work and our regulars. Again, that's that's really what our profession is. And we meanwhile, when we're not working on people directly with energy work or talking about Vedic astrology charts, uh, spiritual coaching, et cetera, et cetera, then we're making videos and we're also doing research. And boy, there's so much going on. You could grab everything that we do over on Patreon. Uh, and again, if you do support us on Patreon, you could do so for basically, I think it comes out to 2.8 or 2.9 cents a day. Um, it's basically a dollar a month is where that starts at. And then you get a 10% uh, deduction or, you know, whatever you want to, how, you ever, how, blah, 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 however you want to look at it, like, and only ten dollars and eighty cents, um, basically, if you pay it for a year, and so you know you can watch everything over there. Or what I wanted to reiterate was obviously evolutionary energy arts is the original channel. Now it only shows three hundred sixty-one videos because evolutionary has had a, a tough life. Um, and again, we started this back in twenty seventeen in the summer of twenty seventeen. Uh, right before the eclipse <laughs> and you know they demonized it so to speak in May of 2019 so we created a backup channel actually I created the backup channel just before that happened because I felt it was coming and as you see EE Arts with 2,000 videos the reality is there's there was probably about two to three thousand on evolutionary as well a lot of them have been removed um, but again, we have been right along since that time period in 2019, not only been on YouTube, but we, we made a Rumble channel. So we are on Rumble. Now, Rumble, we are EE Arts. And then we are on Brightian. And Brightian, we're Evolutionary Energy Arts. And we're on BitChute, too. So we're on all of those. And we have been on all those since May of uh, 2019 or April of 2019. You can also see uh, pretty much every video besides the Patreon exclusives on Ko-Fi. And Ko-Fi, you know, we upload to here as well. And this is what we utilize for people to basically uh, lend their support when we have sessions with them. We use the link to Ko-Fi and people buy us a coffee so to speak so i just wanted to cover that for you guys you know if you could subscribe and have the bell click to all the channels also hearts home uh which is our like high vibe spiritual channel for those that uh just don't want to see the news they just don't want to see anything news related so this is all just deep dives into spirituality um, there's a lot of videos on mantras here. I think there's 50 something meditations, biofield tunings. You know, this is the number one video over on Heart's Home, and that's a healing tuning session with Cindy. And we have people that will use that every week, every few days, uh, because it does help them to regain their uh, grounded rootedness as well as align the chakras and there's also yogas and there's a series on the real Yeshua uh, Jesus because absolutely uh, while there are a lot of different takes and obviously the fundamental uh, list viewpoint on Jesus is one thing it's understanding who is that real person behind all that well you could deep dive over there and anything you wanted to add to that, my dear? Oh, I, I just wanted to say that Heart's Home is the safe place. You know, if you if you like to hear from us, but you're a little afraid of the news, and a lot of people are getting to that point where they just can't handle the, you know, the back and forth and everything else, Heart's Home is a good place where you can just unwind, find your center, um, learn some things about spirituality that might help you. And, you know, you can just bounce around the channels and to see what fits. I, I think we do offer a pretty good array of energy, different energy for folks. 
Yeah, and you know, one of the things I hear from our regulars is that you guys cover like the biggest, widest variety of subjects and topics of any of the channels that I follow is something that we hear uh, all the time. And so, you know, we do want to show the news and what's happening because we have had strong inclinations, uh, strong feelings, even visions and messages uh, about these times. And we are in the thick of these times. We are really, truly in the thick of these times right now. So we want people to be aware of what's happening and what's coming. We want to give them the bigger picture point of view, though. And that's where I think we are different, is that we we kind of give you everything, but then we give a spiritual viewpoint, not a dogmatic viewpoint. I, I don't think it's a dogmatic viewpoint, because um, while there are certain things that we might identify with in various religions, philosophies, you know, spiritual traditions, uh, I wouldn't really say that we're any one thing. And again, we wouldn't want to label ourselves because when you label something, you're kind of sticking in a box. And I don't think we should be stuck in a box. I don't think any of us should be stuck in a box. We should be free to pop our head out and, and to just get out and explore. This is what life is all about. It's learning, growing. And yes, some of these experiences are going to be very, very challenging. Yet we're here, aren't we? We are here. It's all about how are we going to respond? How are we going to react? What are we going to do? What are we not going to do? That's right. Because in a world where everything is absolutely crazy and insane and there's so much going on, the one thing that you always have control over is you. You always bring yourself back to center when you're feeling things are just a little too crazy. Absolutely. And meanwhile, what do we have? Well, you can see a car's on fire in East Baghdad. You know, this is, again, Iraq. More U.S. drone strikes. These, these wars that are going on are going to link up and become one war. And, you know, we're going to see technology that we've never seen before in our times. It's going to be kind of mind-boggling. Uh, can we stop this war from starting? Well, it's already started. Can we stop it uh, from becoming a, a horrible catastrophe that is the hope and and that is why we want to try to show it from a perspective that might help a few people uh to get out of a box again and see it from a new fresh angle by the way u.s kills hezbollah militia leader in retaliatory strike after three troops killed by iranian drones but there's been many of those retaliatory strikes. Again, it's it's understanding how the how the leadership, how the system uses certain language. You know, just again labeling one side terrorist while the other side will label label the other side terrorist. These are escalations. This is what we are are watching. So, what we are seeing is a slow, steady ever-increasing escalation that is, again, still bringing the world together into a global conflict. Certainly, this is absolutely a regional conflict or actually multiple regional conflicts going on right now. And we have to understand that the world is at war, yet we still can create our safe spots for ourselves and we can choose not to be part of the war. You know, going back to the 60s, there was an awful lot of people protesting Vietnam. Vietnam was, I think, the beginning where some people finally were getting it. They were kind of getting it, you know, that this isn't really about what they say it's about. And that was the dawning of the age of Aquarius, according to the song. And and there is truth to that. There it is indeed. Meanwhile, U.S. involved in deadly Ukrainian attack on Russian bakery, so says an envoy. This is the Russian ambassador to the UN. Uh, you know, again, we are already at war with Russia, and thus we're going to be at war with China as well, because China is strongly allied to Russia. In fact, the BRICS nations, which are growing rapidly, is rapidly becoming um, the it's going to be the strongest block that we are going to see in the time directly ahead. Medvedev, this is Russia's number two behind uh, Putin. Warns Russia has no choice but to unleash 
nuclear apocalypse if attacked by NATO. You know, again, we get that they will not be allowed to do that by much higher sources. Because, again, there's been flybys of UFOs that have shut down nuclear facilities. And, yes, the real technology that's in play is far beyond what most humans um, can really believe is in play. And even, you know, the dark side has a, a technological level that is more than thousands of years ahead of what we think we are at. In fact, you know, we could probably multiply that and add a few zeros onto that. That's how far advanced the dark side's technology is. And yet the, the side of light is even farther beyond that. But why do we have this then play out? Well, again, it's all about free will. And this is, a, this is a school of sorts. This is a training ground. This is a learning place. We're coming here to learn and to grow. And that's the ultimate reality. And so those that are aligned with the side of light, per se, choose not to directly interfere with the experiences of others having a 3D experience. Because if you're new to the channel, the reality is you might think that you are a human and that your body is all that you are, but you're, you're not. You're not always a human. You're really an a, eternal soul that's having a temporary human experience. So while we are here, it's all about learning and, and choices. You know, if you're listening to this channel, the chances are highly likely that you are an ancient being. You are one who has been around the block. You have different, you've been different beings. You've been on different planets. You've been uh, from different solar systems, different star systems. I mean, it's just because you're wondering, you're curious, you can taste and you can feel that there's something more to this 3D matrix than just what is on the screen. You know that. And you've probably had experiences to confirm that. But most people, unfortunately, they don't really have a, a lot of others to talk to and kind of bounce these situations off of. So it really does make one unique uh, when you are of the light and you know that there's something wrong and you're just doing your best to make a change for good because that's your craving that's what you have chosen to do you've chosen to move toward the light and and i think it's um helpful to be able to go places where people understand that absolutely so what we're seeing now is the rhetoric is is escalating to all new levels you have all sorts of warnings coming out uh for those that follow doug and stacy's homesteading channel uh they came through uh, with a YouTube notification, and Doug was talking about a meeting of different sheriffs across the country and how, you know, they were warned that there's going to be terrorist attacks in the U.S. and to prepare, and, and a lot of local communities are getting ready for this. And, you know, it, it's only obvious, again, we've been infiltrated to a very high degree. We've seen an exorbitant amount of illegal aliens coming into the country, in, in the tens of millions, literally, and the majority now at this later time, right before perhaps we're going to see the actual uh, turning on of the sleeper cells, uh, what's coming through is predominantly coming through from China. Uh, we've also seen that most of these people coming in are literally coming from the BRICS nations, which are now aligned in an economic pact, and it's also in many cases a military pact. And this is all about basically shifting that power structure from U.S. and NATO over to China, Russia, and the rest of the BRICS nations. Because, again, there's 390 million or thereabouts guns in the U.S. And the U.S. citizens are more armed than any other nation on, on the planet by far. It's going to take a formidable uh, invasion force to be able to control that. Now, they have it all planned out. They, they've been sending them in for decades. In fact, going back to, I think it was 87, when the gentleman supposedly <laughs> defected from the KGB over in the then Soviet Union uh, to say that there were already sleeper cells in place, and they're in place for decades. 
you know, this goes back to the 50s. But then again, the planning for all this goes way back, way beyond the 50s, way beyond the time when probably any of us were alive. Absolutely, unless we have somebody like St. Germain listening. Mm -hmm. Uh Uh-oh, that's that's a different story. Now, again, even though they're talking about nuclear Armageddon, I don't think they're going to be able to do it. But are there weapons that can almost appear to be that? Yes, there are. There's the rods from God. There's all sorts of energy weapons. There are, again, uh, we have seen telegraphed these tsunami bombs that could be utilized. And this is what I really feel is, is part of their plan, is utilizing tsunami bombs. It, they've come right out. Russia has even said that they've basically war game that trying to trigger Cascadia. And it's February 7th, 2024, as we make this video. And, you know, again, I feel that Cascadia, San Andreas are highly likely to go in in the very, very near future. Still feels Cascadia first, but it could be very quick. Could be Cascadia, San Andreas, and New Madrid. Cindy did have one vision where she saw them all go off almost concurrently and everything came to a total halt. And it was kind of chaos in the U.S. That would be the perfect opportunity for them to launch their true invasion. Here you have 45 saying that the next nine months to the election period has a high probability of WW3. Absolutely. Uh, The Anonymous channel had an interview with uh, a general that was saying that, and he gave the interview, I think, a day or two ago, uh, he was saying that, you know, don't get me wrong, you know, we're not going to have WW3 today, tomorrow, next week. But he, he then goes and says, April seems about right. It, well, okay. <laughs> now, we've been getting that for quite a while, that it feels like April is the kickoff for a, a serious escalation. A serious escalation. Is April when they trigger the sleeper cells? My guess would be probably. Um, but we've also gotten from the guides a vision and this timeline, uh, vision that Cindy got was, gosh, what was it? Um, do, do, do four months. So it was 14 months ago. She got a vision that showed her 18 months, 1.5 years, uh, to basically what looked to be an invasion, a military invasion, not sleeper cells. Uh, necessarily, but more like the actual militaries coming into the U.S. So we'll have to see, because the one thing that I want to focus on at the end of this video is the fact that there is no such thing as any one timeline being firmly implanted in stone, and you cannot avert it. That That is not the case. In fact, this is why they cover so many bases, because everything is pliable. You have all these consciousnesses on the planet and not just the 8 billion human consciousnesses that don't really agree on everything. You have also, you know, the animals and the, the plants and, and the birds and, and all sorts of different life here that is all consciousness, all having a part in the bigger picture. Nothing is set in stone. Nothing is. We, we can always push for a better uh, probability and a better future. I think that's really key to recognize that and understand that and keep in mind that everything that's going on on the news, all of the trauma, all of the, you know, emergency broadcasts, all of the, oh my gosh, it's happening right now is a way to keep people in fear and it's a way to keep them from living the best life, their absolute best life. Although it is part of the timeline, it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to envelop your whole world. It doesn't need to take your life away from you. You are a very important spark. You are here to have your own individual experience. And the more you are in touch with yourself, the better off you're going to be. Your your experience is your experience. And it's like this control matrix wants to collect all of this energy for itself. And this disallows for people to really utilize their free will to to the maximum. You know, I I think our free will should be totally, completely 
hours. But with all of this chaos going around, it really makes it difficult for us to do what we want to do for us because we have to base it on what the controllers are doing. But the deeper you get into spirituality and understanding yourself and self-realization, the more you can you know, bypass that, understand that, yes, yucky things are out there. Yes, they are happening. But boy, this is my life and I'm going to live it. Absolutely. And recognize, too, that we are in, I think, the last, you know, weeks, months of the system as we know it, because we're going to go through a real rough, bumpy patch. And then there's going to be a transitional period that's coming. And this transitional period might last a very, very long time. And the reality is, uh, when you look to the cycles of the yugas, there are those that believe the transitional period between the yugas lasts 300 years, per se. Uh, And I wouldn't doubt that. So, you know, are we going straight to a golden age? I don't think so. Not as a collective. Uh, No, no, absolutely, absolutely. Can a person have a golden age experience? Uh, yes, you know, the individual can change, but, and this is why for some people, this is why we made like hearts own, because if you don't want to know the news, then that's fine. You know, you could just watch videos that are all about, you know, the more positive side, the deep dives into spirituality. If you don't want to have your frequency lowered and, you know, you don't want to necessarily know what's, what's coming around the corner, that's, that's up to the individual. We can alter our own reality much easier than we can alter the collectives. This is the challenge. And this is why so many people are incarnate right now is because you're trying to alter the collectives in a positive fashion to a more positive timeline. Definitely. And, you know, we we like to show people that they do have control over their world. I mean, Mike and I, this is a calling for us because it's what we are supposed to do we we both have a mission we both have a story we both have a way how we ended up here with the microphone to speak to others and we get a lot of information from the guides and so many people in our soul stream they are finding themselves you know with the same information going through the same thing so in a way it's a way that we can all go through this together and help support each other Absolutely. As you see this headline, squatters take over 1,200 homes in Atlanta, open illegal strip clubs, terrorize neighborhoods. Is this even America? Well, what we knew is going away and it's not coming back. That's the thing. There are those that just want to, can we just turn the dial back 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, whatever it is. Can we just go back to the 80s? My mom would be like, Oh, can we just go back to the 40s? Even though the war was on, you know, she viewed it as the best of times growing up. Even though a world war was on? Yeah, again, it's how we react to things. Because in in her mind and her memory, what did it do? It brought people together. And again, it's how we look at things. We can see that things are deteriorating and the system has to deteriorate. The system has to go away. We, We cannot fix the system because it's not that the system's dysfunctional, the system is doing what it was intended to do. That's divide and conquer. Here you have uh, Texas Senator Ted Cruz calling now for Mitch McConnell to step down. Yeah, when again, th- this just reeks of ancient Rome where the, the, the senators were in there for life and then they kind of handed it off to their kids, you know, and, and it was just basically nothing ever changed and the corruption was intense and the decadence was unbelievable and it's it's a replay because you know the u.s is rome this is rome right when the barbarians they're not knocking at the gates they're inside already yes and and i don't mean any sort of um any sort of negative terminology for those that are immigrating truly looking for a better life Because, you know, so many people are coming from these countries that have suffered under NATO and under what the U.S. has done. And this in the (laughs) this has been basically done on purpose so that, you know, the U.S. and NATO can then be eliminated in order to bring in the next stage in the same old, same old, just with less uh, illusion of the fact that there are those of the elitist controlling 
class, and there's the rest of us. And here we have Rhonda McDaniel, RNC chairwoman, plans to step down after, uh, you know, 45 had suggested that. We're seeing changes. We're seeing a lot of changes. But beware that we don't give an affirmation to the system when it's the entire system that needs to change. This was interesting, as we see former UN ambassador Nikki Haley, and uh, <laughs> she's obviously running against 45. They didn't have 45 on the ballot, but they did have none of these candidates on the ballot, and none of these candidates won in Nevada with over 60% of the votes. Now, the reality is when we vote, we are basically acknowledging that we're taking part in the system, which is basically giving the system um, justification for whatever it does. So, you know, are you saying don't vote? Well, I've never voted. Never. Because I don't believe in the system. And I was tempted to try to change it from within. I thought about uh, trying to go the libertarian route. But no, it, it didn't resonate because we we are not going to have true uh, freedom, uh, real freedom, and, and, and real opportunity to be each unique person in this system. It's got to be outside of the system. Because what does the system do? The system elevates one to put them down later on. And, you know, right now we're, we're going to see basically the shifting of power again from NATO and the U.S. to the BRICS nations. But that's only temporary because, again, they want to have one global governance where there is no elections at all. So anytime we go ahead and we acknowledge by you know voting or by you know taking part in the system, we're actually giving power to the system. So how are we going to get out of it? That well, that's again a big question. And what does that look like? I think it looks again like people at the community level coming together and working out barter and trade, working out alternative forms of energy exchange. Because there needs to be an energy exchange. We we shouldn't expect things quote unquote, without giving something for them because that's an unequal energy exchange. So if somebody's putting time, effort, and their resources into something to take that without giving back in some way, uh, that causes imbalances. Now, this system is just rigged so that the elite can basically be blood-sucking leeches off of everyone else and that is absolutely what we have with taxation and it's a, the amount of taxes and it's just it, it's beyond insane and it, it's made not only to keep us in a economic slavery situation but to make us suffer because there are beings that feed off of the suffering of humanity there's many different layers there's you know our our parasitic uh, government has a way of directly taking from us in the 3d but then there is that second layer of energy where humans when they are angry and frustrated they put off an energy called loosh and it definitely feeds the second layer of the entities that are here you know we are naturally from a very symbiotic place uh, where where things help lift each other up you know but they've created such a parasitic environment and and i mean even down to the insects really look at them look at the unnatural way that that the ticks are coming out and doing things like taking out herds of cows and then the the mosquitoes i mean this, these parasites are what they are putting out there and it's what they are and we have every right to step out of that parasitic environment but we do have to do it in a way that is karmically karmically correct i hate using that word but it's like we did step into this system with our free will and they know that they know we used our free will but they tricked us so what we have to do is we have to back our way out of the system but we have to do that in a fair way um and just so we're not utilizing any of their 
any of their resources. I mean, we got to learn to do this on our own. And, and that's where it can get very difficult because so many people need the system now. They need the system to help them get by. But there are baby steps. We can baby step our way out. It's just going to take time. Absolutely. You know, and again, where there is a will, there is a way. It's just a matter of finding that on your own personal basis as to what fits you. And corporations are an evil thing. And I do think there's probably nothing more soulless and evil than corporations. Wow, that's a big statement. But look at how they hide behind corporations like this here in order to not be held responsible. And that's what they do, you know, like even with an LLC, a limited liability company. It, when we look at law, and yes, we're still under British Admiralty law, when you look at uh, everything that is done in this world, it's done in such a way so as to enable those that are in the know, in the club, whether that club is Illuminati, whether that club is, you know, some form of Freemasonry, if it, whatever the secret society is, whatever, you know, the club is, obviously the political club is a big one. Or, you know, over in Hollywood, too, you know, you join, you take part of the system, the system takes care of you, system gives you loopholes uh, so that you don't have to be uh, sucked dry by the system itself because it's going to do that to everybody else. U.S. Appeals Court finds Bayer not shielded from the Roundup lawsuit. As, as you see, they're still saying their products are safe. It doesn't matter that there have been so many uh, people that have obviously been affected by their products to the point of losing their lives prematurely. In fact, they've paid out massive amounts, massive amounts, and yet these products are still out there. They're still out there. And and the commercials that, that sell you on your perfect little lawn, because, you know, you, know, you Mr. Johnson, don't want to have a lawn that's less than Mr. Smith. You, you know, that's, that's embarrassing. you got to keep up, right? Meanwhile, gardens in the front lawn are illegal in so many places because you they don't want you feeding yourself. No, they want you toxifying, you know, the water supply. And in fact, you know, there's plastics in everybody's fecal matter. There's all sorts of different prescription drugs that are in the water supply. It's a toxic world. That toxic world leads to nonstop profits. It leads to more control. It's only with changing the entirety of the system by dumping it that we can actually really affect change in this world. That's going to happen in small pockets. But those pockets are going to grow and the system is going to crack and collapse. It's already got cracks coming into it. Definitely, you know, and I, I look at the Roundup situation and it's just so sad because all of the weeds that they say are weeds, they all have great healing potential. You know, the dandelion has endless benefits. I mean, it's life giving and it has been made the poster child for Roundup. And I, I just think it's so, so sad that people don't understand the amount of uh, medicinal value that people call these things weeds i mean they are life-saving they are life-giving so it just you know it kind of points out the structure it points out what they truly are so we have a trillion cicadas that are going to descend on the u.s this spring a rare event that could leave an unforgettable stench oh that doesn't sound good 16 u.s states more than a trillion of them this is the alignment of two separate broods uh, that's going to be the first time since 1803. Brood uh, 13 and brood 14 represent two distinct groups of periodical cicadas that emerge according to 17 and 13 year life cycles, it, respectively. So in a rare natural event that occurs once every 221 years, these broods are going to tunnel through the ground and surface when? In late April. Is it another sign? Remember, X marks the spot. You know, when's that? That's April. Uh oh, it's not time, guys. It's not time. The dog cookies are done. Dog cookies are done. So, you know, we make everything from scratch for the dogs. The dogs eat people food, all organic, and everything is scratch. Uh, dog cookies, uh, we make them 
from scratch all organic ingredients because and that's a topic uh, we were going to touch on in another video I wouldn't trust any dog food out there period anymore you know it's it's such a toxic world and it's so sad that the the animals again uh, they reap uh, the 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 effects of this toxicity so think about all the things that we've seen recently you know the three big uh, eclipses are part of it and April 8th you know is the final eclipse there of the three and the X marks the spot eclipse right over the New Madrid right over the center point of, of that fault that you know last or last erupted a long time ago you know again uh, is it a coincidence there are no coincidences and we got that comet coming from where from Draco, the constellation Draco, the dragon. Yes, absolutely. One, the one that sprouted horns, it's coming. Nuclear fusion reaction releases almost twice the energy put in. You know, the real alternatives, as we're, uh, many people are realizing that maybe solar panels aren't going to be it. Maybe wind farms aren't going to be it. You know, it's going to be mind-blowing, the technology that they are going to openly show us after the war i think again they go from the stick at that point in time oh they're going to be dangling carrots left and right in front of us uh after the war period to in order to get on board yes you might have nasara gesara but you're going to have to agree to all of the system it's the system that's really looking to do what well it's really looking to trap your consciousness is the bottom line Forests break a mesmerizing law found throughout nature, and this is talking about how fractals, self-repeating patterns found all throughout nature, and you know this is from sciencealert.com, they're acknowledging that you see fractal patterns all in nature. Yes, absolutely, and in fact, you are a fractal, a fractal of source, or if you prefer to view it differently, you could use that God term. And say, yeah, absolutely, God is inside of me. When, you know, Yeshua, Jesus is credited with being called the Son of God, well, you're all sons and daughters of God. Of course, that's self-realization 101. That's a basic tenet of most of the Hindu tradition. We all come from source. We all have access to source. And, you know, we need to understand the, the specialness of our spark. And I think a lot of people don't realize exactly how special they truly are they don't realize the abilities that they have access to they don't realize that their their thoughts their heart chakra the energy that they put out into the world really makes huge changes because we have the 3d layer and then of course after the 3d layer there's the unseen layer and that unseen layer is really subject to all of us. I think that's really cool. So while this article acknowledges that fractals are found everywhere in nature, everywhere, at the same time, each forest appears to be unique. And that's the same thing with us too. Each snowflake is unique. And that's the beauty of it. Because, you know, again, one size never fits all. So anytime you go down the path of there's only one way, you're actually talking the dark side speaking. Because there isn't just one way, unless that one way is just simply uh, the energy of love. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you're talking in that generalization, that path will always lead you in the right direction. And here we've been talking about this. Neuralink, Elon Musk neurotechnology company, is building a tool to link human brains with computers without a physical connection. The reality is, where is your consciousness? People will say it's in my brain. Well, yes and no, yeah, not really. Ultimately, there is a, a bigger internet than the internet. And the source field, it, it, to use, um, what was his name again? Uh, David, 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 no, no, no. I can't remember his name now. Um, but Source Field Investigations, you guys know that book. And then Lynn McTaggart wrote The Field. And many people have talked about this field. Well, again... Uh, the ancient rishis and in much of the Eastern philosophies, uh, they've recognized that, that we live in a field of consciousness. We are that consciousness. We're localized pockets, individual pockets of consciousness. 
that's what we are. Now we have different experiences. Right now it, it's as humans. Uh, in this time period, which is being marked by the beginning of WW3 and the disintegration of a complete global power structure, which is going to happen, it's, there, there's not going to be a complete global dominance on this planet uh, like the control system has had in place, but that's because we're in this point in the cycle. Everything is cyclic, and time goes round and round and round again. Elon wants to basically upload our consciousness to be downloaded into a, a new uh, vessel later. Maybe that vessel will be more robotic than uh, organic. But the reality is what they're trying to do is they're trying to trap your source spark. They're trying to utilize the energy that you are for themselves. Uh, should you be excited about these brain implants or, or terrified? You should be you should just steer clear, steer steer far clear. And, and I'm glad to see when I see these things out there on Twitter and Elon himself is, is tweeting things. There's an awful lot of people uh, that are saying, uh, no, thank you. I will pass. I will absolutely pass. There's also a lot of people who are just going to stand in line and they're going to go ahead and get it and they're going to let it happen. And, and I, I see that and I have to say, you know, that's the separation of energies right there. And like that terminology that you used, didn't we just see that? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, 2020. Yeah. You know, just use that terminology. She just said, yet again, people will, yet again, uh, go ahead and trust right. maybe where you shouldn't be trusting. When you look at this, this is um, a spiral that is trying to give us an idea of the multiverse. Because we live in a universe which is nothing but a single cell. So this information came through from the guides a little bit ago, and I thought it was very interesting. Um, the the mind, I'm, we, have, we have our brain, and we need to understand that we ourselves are transmitters. But then there is the mind, and what the guides told me is that every life that we live becomes a mind just like one of these spheres one of these balls that you you see here on the screen it becomes a mind and you could have endless of these and we have access to this when we're not in the body while we well i mean when we are outside of the body we have endless access we can move forward backwards up down throughout time whatever and we can go to any one of these minds that we have created <clears throat> and today was a lot of fun because when we're talking with with our family members they they have a lot of really good ideas and you know maybe if you are doing something in your life and you feel like you are remembering something, you are remembering something, who's not to say that that might not be you coming from another aspect of yourself to come and remind yourself of really who you are? And again, you know, this is an opportunity for growth and that's the way we should really ultimately view it. It, it will be absolutely like the Dickens uh, novel. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It's all what we make of it. It truly, truly is. So what she was getting was that when we have this life and this experience and we move out of the body, now this can be done even when we're still alive through deep meditation uh, practices. It, it, it's not easy, but there are those that can do this. And a lot of times when we're in dreams, this is exactly what we're doing. We're trying to replay and rewrite events and check out different possibilities. So once you have an experience in, say, you know, your name is Joe Adams, for instance, or whatever, you, you live a life as Joe Adams, and you made critical choices at certain junctures. Maybe you had, you know, an offer to you know, go to one college or another, or maybe you, you were going to get married, weren't going to get married. Maybe you, you know, decided to quit your job and move to a different country. You could go back and replay each of those lives out of body, step into that reality and play it out, taking the other choice. And this world has been created for you by this particular life. You can always access it. 
as I've shared with you guys in, in my last life, I was a composer. And what did I hate as a kid? As a kid, I hated music class. Absolutely hated it. It's the one thing I didn't want to do. That was my own programming because I didn't want to repeat the life I just lived. That's not the purpose. Perfect. That's not the purpose for this life. The purpose for this life is totally different. So, you know, again, this is where your astrological chart can kind of give you clues. It wasn't until a certain point in time, 42 years old, and Cindy will tell you the importance of 42, that at 42, I made a decision, you know what? I've never learned any sort of instrument. I think I'll do a bucket list type thing. I'm, you know, hitting midlife crisis. I'm going to buy a guitar and try to teach myself guitar. So I did, you know, and it wasn't until I was 42. I mean, I did have an appreciation. I've always liked music. And as the years have gone on, I've come to love music more and more and more and all different types of music. But it wasn't until Saturn let go of my intention and my programming for the purpose of this life, which really is around that age, again, Saturn returns, um, and for those of you that have any astrological knowledge there, that I was able to start to tap into the real me a little bit more and past lives as well. Well, there is so much you, you can look at, but <clears throat> Saturn return usually comes around at 28, but in Vedic astrology, 42 is when you become mature and in in the vedic world they don't look at anyone who's 18 years of age and feel that they have any any type of maturity a mature person that comes at the age of 26 to 28 with your first saturn return so saturn has a way of keeping you from redoing what you did in your past life and when it's time for you to if you want to lean into that past life you can usually it's 42 right around then when you are released and you can go ahead and go back to doing what you what you want what you did in a past life so it's all very very interesting and curious how things fall together but 42 is a lot of it's an age where so many people change and I have to tell you you know I mean relationship wise I know 42 for some of you that's a long way off but it's probably the safest way if you're going to be in a long-term relationship you you pretty much know at 42 what you're going to be doing where you're going to be going but I mean still we're all human and we're going to get involved in relationships and we're going to carry on but charts have a lot to say about, you know, do you do you continue to date other people or are you more careful? Do you, should you stay out of the realm of relationships? Um, should you go ahead and are, do you have that ability to commit to a relationship and have it be, you know, safe and productive? But definitely 42 is that age where people's a light bulb goes off and epiphany happens and they're like, whoa. This is not what I wanted to do. I want to do something different. And regardless of what might be going on in their life, things just change. They change drastically. And sometimes it can be very hurtful for yourself and other people too. Yeah, it's just, it's mind-blowing what is contained in um, the Bhagavata Purana, in the Mahabharata, the Ramayana. In the Vedas, it's just mind-blowing their understanding of time dilation, of the multiverse, of, of, you know, the fact that time is also ultimately an illusion of sorts. You know, there's this one spot where uh, this, this one person, this one being is, is able to see so many times the epic of the Ramayana and the Mahabharata play out. And again, the Ramayana happened, uh, well, earlier than the Mahabharata. It, it's debatable. Uh, people have different uh, opinions on this. Generalization-wise, uh, you could say that it's thought that the Mahabharata happened about 3102, 3106, um, BC, so 5,000, and the Ramayana probably 2,000 or 3,000 years before that. 
And so, you know, how could one being see uh, one if they were watching? Why, how could they possibly see the Mahabharata play out more times than the Ramayana? Well, because again, uh, when we're out of the body, we can go forward, backward. It there really is no time. Is there is no time? It's only really a construct for us in this density, so that we can have a, like an extra sort of filter uh, to have a much more immersed experience in in embodiment. Well, you know, a lot of people get very frustrated because there there are so many filters in the human body. We do not have access to the all as long as we're in that body. But what it does, the blessing is, is it forces us to strive for something different. It makes us stretch ourselves. It makes us search. It makes us look. It makes us wander. And in all of these struggles, in you know, all, all of these, you know, like muddling through the mud, just trying to struggle to figure things out. We are expanding because as human beings, that is, that is just the nature of our being. We are expanding and whatever higher self needs to do, higher self is going to do to help you find that expansion. And it might feel very difficult. It might be very, um, uncomfortable, but, the universe is going to ask you to move. And if it's not uncomfortable, many times people don't go anywhere. Absolutely. And just briefly to touch on that uh, Ramayana and the Mahabharata, it's also mentioned that each time that the being observed them play out in their events, they all played out differently differently. It wasn't the exact same outcome each time. Each time it was different. That's huge. That is a huge, huge little nugget as to our realities. And again, showing nothing is set in stone. You know, the concept that we can't do anything about it, it's all God's will. Well, source's will is that we each have a unique experience and we are co-creators. This is from the Bhagavata Purana, each, uh, every universe is covered by seven layers, earth, water, fire, air, sky, the total energy and the false ego, each 10 times greater than the previous one. There are innumerable universes besides this one. And although they are unlimitedly large, they move about like atoms in you. Therefore, you are also called unlimited. The, the wisdom that's inside these books is mind-blowing. If, if you've only been exposed to, uh, say, the Bible and the Pseudepigrapha and the non-canonical books, the, the Nag Hammadi, it, it would blow your mind what the concepts are uh, here and what they're talking about because it's an exploration of consciousness, and it's mind-blowing. And the, the reality is, again, they knew that just every single universe is but an atom. This is something that's coming from a tradition that's thousands of years old. And it, it definitely does predate uh, anything we have Abrahamic. And in fact, when, when you do read into uh, the Upanishads, it, it reads like the best of the allegories that we get out of the, out of the Bible. And it's because, again, uh, so much of it is taken from different sources. We live in all these different possibilities. And the reality that was hitting me today when we were having a conversation with some of our uh, beloved regular family members like, like John and Jane, uh, it, it, it was just hitting me how, how do we know right now isn't a revisit instead of the original time? You don't know. I mean, is this you, your consciousness, your higher self coming back to experience what would happen if you didn't make the decisions that you made the last time? The reality is we don't know while we're in the body. No, no, we don't. We don't. And that's part of the mystery of things. This is part of how things simply are for you to have make the most out of your experience while you are in the human body. I think one thing that sometimes is hard for me to say, but it's true, it's like a universal truth. 
Everything going on in your life is not happening to you. It is happening for you. And once that really sinks in and you understand where that information is coming from, from the love of source, that you're being molded and you're being guided and you're being, you know, tempered and you are being softened, you're being strengthened because of the love of source wants you to have that experience. So it's all happening for you. It's not happening to you. It is, it can be a bit of a shift when it comes to moving to that place, but this is the truth that I was shown. Absolutely. You know, and this is what the guides have shared. They have shared that there's there's no one uh, philosophy, religion, or belief system that has it perfect uh, because it couldn't be while we're embodied. We, we just couldn't see things that clearly while we're in the body. But, but what it comes closest is, is through this uh, tradition uh, as far as the concepts. And many of these uh, are given to us by beings that ultimately are not human. They're not homo sapiens sapiens. So they have the whole concept of a multiverse. And it's it's a cycle of creation and destruction, and then it repeats itself again and again and again. Uh, uh, there's I got some articles for those of you that want to go a little bit deeper that I'll, I'll post them. Again, time travel and illusion of the multiverse. Because the reality, again, is that time itself is something that is is something that's only really experienced when we're in a 3D embodiment. So, you know, are you living right now a life that you have come back to relive and perhaps try from a different angle? So, again, that whole concept of, you know, there's only one heaven, one hell, eternal punishment or eternal pleasure no, there's nothing uh, that is eternal besides consciousness itself. Consciousness is the only thing that goes on forever, but it changes, it evolves, and it goes through uh, different phases. And that is even clearly uh, outlined again in this tradition where it speaks of souls attaining certain heavenly worlds to experience for periods of time, but it's never forever. Because at some point in time, uh, the soul will choose to, to come down and have another heavier experience, or it'll choose to go and merge in some traditions with the all, with the one consciousness. And, and again, in, in Hinduism, for instance, uh, it's, it's, there's this chicken and the egg type thing, monism and monotheism. And, you know, uh, they you basically agree to disagree uh, in a civilized way as to, you know, whether there is a single ultimate creator or whether it's just uh, a universal consciousness, a universal mind, so to speak, that we all share, uh, but we're all having this illusion of separateness too. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, it's all for you. This is your creation. This is your world. This is what you are doing to bring growth for you and everything else that you're seeing around you is, is all for you and it does come from source. It comes from the love of source. As always, guys, thanks for your support. Make sure you are subscribed and have that little bell clicked and do please share these videos if you find them uh, interesting, enlightening, or informative. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.